Okay, so welcome to today's class. Um, it is called Deep Dive into Facebook Ads, and it's going to be taught by the amazing Chantelle Wrights. Um, I don't know if any of you have been on her classes before, but they are awesome. So just a couple of rules. You must have your camera on. If for some reason the name that shows on your camera is not your name, would you please put it in the comments what the name is that's showing and what your name is so that you can be credited for the CE hours. However, you will only receive credit if you remain present the whole of the duration of the class. Um, Chantelle will give three key words. I think most of you have been on the class and you are required to note those and send them to her at the end of the class. Um, so before we get going, any questions? Great. Enjoy the class. Thanks, Chantel. You betcha. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do um, as far as turning in the keywords here is in the chat, I'm just copying this link here. I'm going to put in a link to a Google form. So there's actually four keywords. You have to have three of the four correct. So that's where the three keywords is. Um, so if you just copy and paste that link and throw it in your browser, when class is over, you can submit your information. Um, it just asks for license and contact information so that I can get those hours put in. Um, and yeah, so we should be ready to rock and roll. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so this class in particular um, is a lot of information and it can feel very overwhelming or like you're kind of drinking from a fire hose. So feel free to please interrupt me at any time if you have questions um, and I'll be all I don't mind at all so that doesn't bother me you're you're welcome to just pipe up and ask whatever you need um and yeah so let's rock and roll so let me get into my slides here and I will share screen All right, so you should all be able to see this now. Can we get a thumbs up? Are we good? Okay. Okay, so we are going to be going into Facebook ads today and talking about the Facebook ads platform. Um, this can be a very confusing platform, especially because I think they seem to change it every five minutes. I actually just went through and updated my slides last night because they changed the and updated the platform again from even two weeks ago. So it's constantly changing and evolving, but the more you're in it, it's pretty user friendly um, once you kind of understand what, the, what they're asking for and what you need. Um, because we are talking, well, uh, I'll, this is just kind of a little overview. I thought this was in the next slide. Um, we'll be going through the different categories of ads you can place within the ads manager. We'll break it down as basic as we can. We'll talk about demographics. We will also really dig into the analytics um, tables and make sure you guys understand all of that, okay? Um, and because we are talking about social media and I am with um, ITS Title, as a title producer, um, I have to just put out this little disclaimer from the insurance department that you cannot pay me to like, share, or comment on your posts. I cannot pay you to like, share, comment on your posts, um, but I'm happy to do so. So if there's things you want help pushing out or um, maybe just, you know, need some boosting on or whatever. If you need a little extra love on your social media, just let me know if, if you've got an open house or something. I'm happy to share it on my page. ITS is happy to share it on their page. We just cannot exchange money to do so, but we are happy to do so out of the goodness of our hearts. So that being said, let's kick off here. So when you are doing a marketing campaign, the first and most important thing you have to do is figure out what is the purpose of your campaign. Um, what are you trying to get out of it? Are you looking for just general overall brand awareness? Are you trying to increase traffic or likes on your page? Is there post engagement that you're wanting to do? Uh, maybe you have an event you're promoting like an open house. Maybe you have a listing um, or maybe you're trying to get traffic to your website. So those are all different options and not even all of the options out there. So you've got to know what it is you're trying to achieve from the ad before you even start. And then the second thing you've got to know is who are you trying to reach? Um, who is the target that you've got there? Um, if it's a property listing, obviously we're trying to reach buyers, right? Maybe we're trying to, uh, maybe we're hosting a first time home buyers class and we're trying to reach some 
you know, younger population and get them started in the home buying process. Like there's so many different things, but you've got to know before you start who it is you want to get in front of. Okay. So that is the very first thing you do, no matter what, before you start any ad campaign. And this is not even just applicable to Facebook. This would be anytime you're marketing or advertising at all. I always recommend um, making sure you've got this nailed down before you start. Okay. The next thing you're going to need is, especially for um, internet ads, is your ad, your ad copy and your design. So whatever it is you're going to post, you want to have that ready before you even start your ads. So one of the um, platforms that I really, really love is Canva. Um, I don't know if you guys are Canva users. I see a couple people nodding. Um, Canva is like the best thing ever. Um, especially for like solopreneurs who aren't super savvy in like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. This is so easy and slick to use and it's just, the, it's so great. So if you're not a Canva user, I highly recommend um, getting on it. There's an app, you can do it from your phone or you can do it from the computer. Your, all of your graphics are saved on both places so you can use it interchangeably. And they're always innovating and updating. Like I remember I've been using Canva since it first came out and it was pretty basic, still was phenomenal, but still was pretty basic. Now you can do all sorts of things from like animation with your ads. Uh, you can use video, not just still pictures. You can, I mean, there's so many things you can do. It is one of my very favorite things. So I feel like sometimes I live in Canva, which is a good and a bad thing but it is super user-friendly. So these are screenshots from um, the website, canva.com. Like I said, there is an app as well. Um, some things are easier to do online. Some are easy to just kind of touch up or do on your phone, but both are pretty user-friendly. The first thing you do is come in and on the top right corner, you'll see the purple um, little button that says create design. So once you're there, you can do a drop down in that search. There are so many options here that Canva already has pre-sized out for you to pick for your images. Um, one of the things that is kind of frustrating with Facebook versus, and with Instagram, especially because you can place ads to both platforms from Facebook, is that the sizing is actually different. And so you want to make sure, I that's we'll talk about that later, but I always separate my Instagram ads from my Facebook ads. Um, so that I can optimize for size, if I'm doing stories, all of those things. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but in, but Canva has all of these graphics pre-sized out for you. So all you have to do is come in and search and type in what it is that you're doing, and it'll pull up the options, and you can select it, and it'll be pre-done exactly the dimensions that you need it to be, which is so, so, so great. It's very, very easy to use. So you'll see here, I just did a basic Instagram post. Um, and once you select the size, it's going to on the left pull up hundreds of templates for you. There are some really great things in there. You can kind of look through and see what you want, pick something you like, um, and then you can, you can customize it from there so that it fits what you need. Um, you can take out their photos, add your own, you can change colors, you can I mean, there's so many different things. You can upload all of your own photos here, which is fantastic, um, and just have access to your own graphics and media. Um, I happen to have the paid version of Canva, uh, which I highly recommend. It's not that expensive. It seems like it's, I don't know, maybe 12 to $15 a month. Um, but within that, you can actually save different things, fonts, colors, um, photos, all of these things that are particular to your brand and you can actually share with teammates. So if you have other people on your team or people that help you with your social media, it's very easy to share folders with them so that you guys all have access to the same graphics. So I love that as well. Um, so here you kind of just drag your image in, fix it up, whatever you need to do, resize it. You can, like I said, change colors. I love if over here, if you select new color, you can actually enter the digital code of the colors that you want. So everything stays 100% on point for your branding, which is so, so, so important. You want to make sure your colors are always consistent and that you're using the right ones. So that way you can get your exact colors that you need. Once you're done with that, you just save it and you can save it to your phone. You can download it to your computer, whatever it is, and you're ready to post. So 
Canva is such a great platform. You can also just completely start from scratch. Um, like I said, you can use videos. There's all sorts of different things. You can go in, change filters, add different elements, shapes. There's so many things. There's even some music in there that you can add, some royalty-free music. Um, so that's always good um, to kind of throw into your stuff, which if you have like a little video or animation is fantastic. Does anybody have questions on Canva while we're here? Is it pretty, everybody's pretty familiar with it? Okay. All right. So once you are done with that, you've got your creative, um, you've got your objective set up. What you're going to do is go to facebook.com forward slash ads manager. So this is where I work in the ads. Um, this is a little bit more complicated than just boosting a post, but it's a lot more effective. So this is going to be your home for ads manager. Once you're here, you'll see on the left, there is a little green button that says create. That's where you're gonna start building your ad, okay? Um, and I do wanna say it is ads manager um, with um, an S. Okay, um, and so that is actually going to be your first keyword for class today is ads manager. Ads manager, first keyword. Okay, all right, so once you click create, then it's going to pull you into a little pop up that wants you to select your campaign options. So we're gonna go through most of these here. So you'll see there's three different categories. You've got awareness, consideration, and conversion, and we'll go through most of these here. So awareness is the first one. So what you're gonna see on your first one is brand awareness versus reach. These ones are for small business owners are not ones that I recommend um, because these are ones that very large companies typically use where they're just trying to get their brand out to as many people as possible. Um, they're not too worried about interactions. They're not trying to build their page. They're just simply trying to canvas an entire area, right? So companies that this is effective for um, and good for is like Coca-Cola or McDonald's, things of that nature, where they don't necessarily have a super target market. They kind of just reach anyone and everyone and they have, millions of millions of ad dollars to spend, right? So um, for that reason, I don't recommend doing this. I think there's better targeting that you can get better results with some of the other ones, but just so you're aware of what they are. Um, brand awareness is probably um, a little bit more targeted, very slightly more targeted than reach. So the brand awareness is going to send ads that are to people that based on their analytics are most likely to pay attention and recall your ads, right? Where reach is strictly just straight out, we're just sending it out, we're just trying to get in front of as many people as possible. Does that make sense? So very slight difference there, um, but still so you have an idea of what you're looking at. Okay, now let's talk about consideration. So this was the center column on those ads. So you'll see there was traffic, um, engagement, app installs, video views, and lead generation and messages. And we're gonna go through most of these today to talk about the different types and what they are. The ones we will not cover are app installs and video views. And that's because um, most of us as agents, um, with you as agents don't necessarily have your own um, app that you're trying to sell. Um, and video views is pretty self-explanatory. We're legit just going straight up for as many views as we can, okay? All right, so the first one is traffic. So traffic is one where you are sending people away from Facebook. So that can be to an app, it can be to a website. Um, I think they have WhatsApp as an option now to connect into um, and possibly Messenger. I'm trying to remember what all the options are, but basically you're taking them off of Facebook, okay? Um, you wanna have a couple things in mind and set up before you choose traffic. If traffic is what you're going for, um, you wanna make sure if you are sending them, especially to a, a website or landing page, um, you wanna make sure your site is set up to capture information, right? Otherwise they leave Facebook and if you are not capturing their information, 
um, you're basically wasting your money. So you want to make sure that that is set up. I am a big fan of creating custom landing pages specific to ads. Um, what that means is if I'm creating an ad and I send them to the home page of my website, let's say my ad is specifically for um, a first time home buyers class, but I just put in my website main address and people go there and they can't immediately see all the information they need for that first time home buyers class, they will leave, okay? So it's going to be, you want to make sure wherever you're sending them, I always create pages that are specific to the ad. So that way I have, when they click on this first time home buyers class, they're going straight to the page that has all of the information for the first time home buyers class, instead of going to other websites or to having to search for it or look around. From there, you can link them into the rest of your website so they can link or look around, right? That can link to your homepage or whatever for them to get more information. But you always want to have them directed to a specific site. You also want to make sure that your site will sell them on your brand, right? So make sure that whatever it is, you've really looked over your site and you need to make sure you can work them through your funnel. Is your site going to keep them engaged? If they, if they come to your site and they're not immediately pulled in and start reading through stuff, they will bounce, which hurts you um, for your Google rankings. So you wanna make sure that your site will keep them engaged. And then like we talked about, will your site convert these visitors into clients or somehow allow you to start working them through a funnel, right? If you've got their information and you can start reaching out to them, then you're able to work them through your funnel. Okay, so those are things that I want you to make sure that are in place before you do a traffic ad. Now, if you're doing, this is if you're sending them to a website, right? If you're sending them to Messenger or to some other thing, you wanna just make sure whatever you're sending them to is set up, right? Maybe you're doing a bot program and, and you're gonna send them to Messenger and have them start messaging through your bots until you take over or whatever that is. Make sure that that is set up. Does anybody have questions on traffic? Okay, I do my best to try to like um, look through the um, your videos and make sure to see if anybody's raising hands or things, but when there's a lot, it gets hard. And also just to let you know, sometimes I can pull up the chat and sometimes I don't. So if you have a question, it's best just to unmute versus the chat. Okay, the next one on here is engagement. So what we're looking at here is um, this can mean like post interactions, right? So we're looking for likes and comments on a certain post. It could mean um, promoting your page, trying to get likes on your page. It could, there can be offers involved. It could even be open houses. If you're promoting like an event or an open house, it's, that's gonna be an engagement because you're looking for people to say, oh, they're interested or going or not going or whatever. Those are gonna be considered engagements within that. Um, I prefer this over awareness campaigns uh, because it's pulling people into your page and getting you involved with your page. It helps the algorithms within your page. Um, it helps you to grow your page and bring awareness, but they're, once they're engaging with you, they're more likely to engage a second time or continue that relationship. So this is what, if you're looking for something that would be more of an awareness campaign and not necessarily um, something where you're trying to, like you're just trying to get your name out there, you're not necessarily trying to sell a house or, or get a listing or whatever, this would be preferred over awareness. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. I'm seeing a couple nods, so that's good. All right, the next one is lead generation. So this one is a really great one to do. Um, and it's very, very easy. So what this does is it pops up with a form fill and Facebook has made this so, so easy for people that they basically just have to check a box that says, do you want to send them your information? And once they do that, Facebook sends them whatever information you've requested. So you can set it up to have, you know, name, phone number, email, whatever it is, Facebook pulls their information and it sends it straight over. The reason this is beneficial is because people are lazy and don't like to fill out forms. So Facebook has really just taken it and done it for them, which is fantastic. The one caveat to this is you have to have 
um, a, um, oh my gosh, privacy policy. <laughs> the name slipped my mind. Um, you have to have a link or some kind of privacy policy that you can upload in, when you're doing this um, campaign that says what you're going to do with their information. I'm sure you guys have seen those all over the place. Um, that said, you know, we don't sell your information to third party, blah, 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 blah. So something to that effect you have to have in order to do this lead generation campaign, okay? The other thing I will say is if you do not have a CRM that you can sync this to, and it will sync to most CRMs that I've seen. There's, there's not been many that I've seen that it doesn't work with. Um, but if you don't have a CRM, then you've got to get in here on a daily basis or maybe even twice a day to reach out to the people that sent, that fill out the forms because Facebook does not send you a notification when someone fills it out. So you're going to have to set up in your schedule that you're getting in and checking to make sure you can strike while the iron's hot. If someone fills out this form, you can immediately start to get in front of them. So um, if that's the case, just make sure you set up to check it two or three times a day. Just go in and see if anyone's filled out your form. Um, and then you can get their information out of there. Does anyone have questions about this? Okay, all right. All right, let's talk about messages. So this is another one that you can do um, that basically puts you straight to engaging with the client. I actually really love these campaigns. Um, they I, Most people are moving more towards using messages um, through Facebook with businesses because um, I think it's kind of, I, I think the reason is it's kind of that in between. I feel like they think chats or um, emails tend to be like bots or a little bit more um, where they're not necessarily talking to an actual person. So this feels a little bit more personal to them without going to the extreme of like, oh, I'm talking to you on the phone and now I feel like you own my soul. And so I feel like this is a really great in-between. 54.4% um, of US social media users say they preferred messaging channels to email, phone, and online chat. And I believe that's the reason why, is it feels personal enough, but not overly personal. So it's kind of that in-between. 67% um, say they plan to increase their messaging with businesses in the next two years. So this is a great place to be. Let me see, I saw a chat pull up. Oh, this I actually got it to open, hallelujah. Um, Lisa had asked, does the privacy policy have to be anything fancy or just we will be calling, texting, email, but won't be selling your info? No, it doesn't have to be anything specific. You just have to have one. Um, and it, you could even go and find something online. Um, and even copy and paste it and just kind of change out the info or whatever. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Just, you know, we're not selling your information to third parties, whatever. Um, something basic is totally fine. Did that answer your question? Yes. Do we just okay. put that on our, our website? So it used to be that you had to have a link to a privacy page and you would have to have it on your website, but I believe um, when I was messing around with this a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think now it actually just has a spot where you can just paste it into your campaign and it's just built in. So you don't have to have a link to it anymore. Just like at the bottom? I think so. It, it seems like there was a spot in a form that popped up that you could just paste it in there. Um, okay. But it, I mean, it changes every five seconds. But the last I looked, that was the case. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. All righty, let's kick into the next. So conversion is the next section on there. Um, this is one I'm gonna touch on a little bit, but I'm not gonna dive too deep in. Um, it, this depends a lot on uh, it, whether or not you have your own website. And I mean, by that, I mean something that you've built yourself versus something like a page on your broker's website, right? And so it varies, it varies. There's not a ton of agents that have their own websites. If you do have your very own website, then this is um, going to be preferred to traffic because you can actually link your Facebook pixel to your website and they talk to each other and it gives you more data and analytics. So you're actually able to track people all the way through the process 
and see how many people actually converted and did the final action that you wanted them to do, which is a super cool thing. But most cases, if you have just a landing page on your broker's website, you won't have access to the back end where you can add the pixel and the container tag. Does that make sense? So uh, just kind of touching on that, um, you're going to see three options there. The top one conversion is really the only ones you would do if you had your own website. Um, catalog sales and store visits aren't going to be applicable for you guys as agents. So um, just keep that in mind. If you do have your own website, that is a great thing to do. And you would do this in place of the traffic. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about strategy. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're coming in and placing ads, no matter what the platform is, even Facebook regardless. First of all, you want to talk about your audience, right? We've already, we kind of touched on that at the beginning, but you want to attract the ideal clients to your business. So you've got to build that persona of who that is. And for those that have taken my branding class, I've got a lot of information on how to do that and why it's super important to be very specific about who you're trying to reach. Um, now, the one caveat to that is, especially as agents, when you're pushing a listing and things like that, there's a lot of things that they've really, really, really cracked down on as far as what realtors are able to push out there. So by that, I mean, we're talking about all your fair housing laws and requirements and things like that. So there's times where you can target and there's other times where you can't and, um, and you've got to be wary of that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, Cindy, I think I'll look at the schedule, but I think that Presidio's got the branding class on the schedule sometime. But if not, I can get in touch with you and we'll we'll figure that out. Okay. Then once you have the audience figured out, we want to figure out how to target that ideal audience. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with A-B testing, uh, looking at you know where they're located, things like that, and what's going to resonate with them. I also recommend having some sort of reward or incentive for those that share your post or are specific with your call to action. And that doesn't necessarily mean like a gift that you're giving them something, but there's got to be something in it for them. So what is it that is going to draw them in through your ad and to be very specific about that? Does that make sense? Especially with your call to action, you want to be very, very specific about it. If you are, you know, hosting, if we're talking again about that first time home buyers class, your call to action might be like register now, right? Like or register here, something to that effect. Versus if it's, um, you know, maybe a listing, you might want to do like learn more, right? Does that make sense? So you want to be very specific about it and make sure that you're, that you're very clear about what's in it for them, okay? Engagement is the next one. That is probably the biggest thing with social media is engagement, is, is getting people to like, comment, whatever. So you want to draw them into your post. So asking questions is a great way to do that. Uh, you also want to watch for what we call trigger words. Um, those are things where you're prodding people to do something. So when you say, comment your blah, 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 blah or share this post if blah, 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 blah. Those are words that Facebook, it kind of um, in their algorithms will alert them that you're trying to boost engagement inauthentically on your post. So you wanna watch for those and not use those kind of words. Be creative about it. How can you draw people into the post? You wanna be fun, you want mix it up, be informative, make it very easy and be consistent. Contests are always great. Uh, you can team up with other companies, doing giveaways, even things yourself. You can do little voting things, make it very simple. Uh, just make sure you are following Facebook's contest rules, okay? There's, they have, you can Google that really easily and just get all of their rules and restrictions. There's certain things you have to add to your post in order to do content or contests, which is not a big deal. Uh, and then always having that monetization in the back of your head. It, how am I going to use this as lead generation? Am I capturing their emails? Am I building my database? Am I reviewing those insights and analytics, making sure that these are working for me? Um, there's a lot of companies out there and that'll come in and say, oh, we can do all these ads for you. 
uh, which is great, but if you're not specific in figuring out how you're gonna track and monetize it, then you aren't gonna know if it's working for you or not. And oftentimes we, lay, we end up frustrated um, that we've wasted our money and thrown it out the window when really we just needed to be more clear about what we expected. Does that make sense? Okay, does anyone have questions yet? Cool, okay. All righty, let's talk about targeted demographics. This is your keyword number two. Targeted demographics is keyword number two. Okay, all right. So when we're talking about targeting demographics, again, this is where we have to be careful and make sure that we're compliant with fair housing laws. Um, and that we're not discriminating and all of that stuff. If you have a listing, be really, really careful about how you're um, targeting. The benefit is now Facebook's ad platform is set up in such a way that you really can't screw up. They don't let you. They had so many lawsuits that they really cracked down on it. Um, but there's other things that you can do that you can work around that. So when you're doing an ad, um, I always think about like, I want to target and get in front of the exact right people, right? Like I'm not going to waste my time showing houses to a, like a $750,000 house to a bunch of college students, right? So I'm not going to advertise to them either. Um, like I said, you've got to be careful about how we target and making sure we're not being discriminatory, but you also want to get the most bang for your buck and make sure that you're not wasting your dollars either. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through some of these um, demographics. So what, back to this little campaign objective. So I'm going to walk you through, um, these are screenshots of pulling off, placing a traffic ad. So these will be a little bit different no matter, just depending on which one you select, um, but traffic and driving people to your website is the basic one we're going to do here, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is select traffic and then it's going to pop up and say traffic, blah, blah, blah. And then you just click continue. Super easy. Once you finish there, you're going to come in and name your campaign. So this is so that you are able to see uh, when you come back into it, what you're looking at again, and you can differentiate from your other campaigns. This third number here, number three, this is where you need to turn on or off um, your special ad category. So this is going to be your housing ads. Um, if you're marketing a listing, you've got to make sure that you turn that on. Anything to do with credit, employment, and housing, right? You, you have to, have to, have to make sure you turn that on. Once that is on, that's going to be your safety net for making sure you're compliant, okay? If you are marketing an event or something that um, is not, like it's, kind, it's not a house, so it kind of blurs that line, um, you can get away with, some of these other targets. Um, however, just be very careful. Facebook, if your page is a real real estate page, they often flag it anyway. Um, and sometimes you have to go through an appeals process a couple of times to get your ads approved, which is not a big deal, um, but they tend to flag everything right off the bat just because they're being overprotective. And then you kind of work through the process of what they want done and, and push through what you can. Does that make sense? I hope, okay. All right, the next thing you can select. Um, so you'll see here this campaign details with auction. Um, that means basically, so when you're running an ad campaign, and this is really um, true for no matter what kind of ad you're doing online, uh, when they say auction, what they mean is everything goes through like a bidding process within a nanosecond. So what they're trying to do is get when space pulls up um, in someone's feed or on a website or, or on Google, in that nanosecond, they pull up all of the people that are bidding to, to get ads on that site. And then whoever's in the list, they pull highest bidders and throw them in, okay? So depending on how you do things, um, that can limit you or it can be a benefit. So, um, so just kind of some things to keep in mind when you're looking at targets. And then it just reminds you again, campaign objective is traffic. So we're driving people away from Facebook. The next option here you have number four is A-B testing. So you can actually create ad sets 
and run them simultaneously against each other to see what performs better for your clients. Um, you can, and that can be done at any time. It's very easy. Basically, it just kind of gives you analytics and lets you see what kind of images perform better or videos or whatever. So um, just kind of keep that in mind that that's an option. Most people aren't running multiple ads simultaneously, so um, you may not get into it until you're a little bit further down the road, um, maybe have a little higher ad budget, but just so you know that's available. All right, once you get into there, then you're going to name your ad set, right? So if you're running multiple ad sets at a time, now you want to have some sort of um, signal to you as to which ad set you're looking at. Um, here you'll see your options for traffic. So you get to choose where you want to drive that traffic. I selected website here just so you can see. You can also drive people to an app, like I said, Messenger and WhatsApp, right? And depending on which one of these you choose, um, down the road it affects different options and we'll get to that in a minute. So for here, I have chosen website. And then you'll see on the right side, this right side kind of stays frozen on as you create the ad, it kind of scrolls with you. So as you add the different targets and things like that, it's going to tell you um, how many people you're reaching. So obviously right now there's no target set up. So you can see that it's like, oh, you have the potential of reaching 230 million people. Um, that's obviously not going to stay the same. I, I get this question a lot. Is it better to like people worry if their thing gets in the red? Um, I don't ever worry about that because to me, if I'm spending, let's say I have $100 to spend on an ad. If I'm spending $100 and I could potentially reach um, 10,000 people each one time, or I could spend that same $100 and reach 1,000 people each 10 times. I want to spend my money. So specific is not bad. It just depends on what your you know, what your outcome is. As we know, we're inundated with ads and things constantly, we're flooded with things. And so reaching someone once is never ever gonna stand out for them. I believe now the number of times you wanna get in front of someone is nine before they, it's either nine or 13, I can't remember. Either way, it's a lot. So you wanna make sure that you're not diluting your ad spend too much, right? You wanna get in front of those people over and over and over again. Then as you go, it's going to also tell you like with, with this setup, this is how many people you could reach a day and this is how many link clicks we think you'll get. So that'll change and adjust as you start putting in the different um, categories and things, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is determine your budget. So you can do this one of two ways. So on this drop down, you'll see there's a daily budget. Um, I can set that up to be whatever I want. You can also set a lifetime budget, which means um, you can run it, um, like maybe you just want to spend $150 on this ad and let Facebook do its thing, but you're, once $150 is done, you're done, right? That's one way. Daily budget is one you can set, okay, I'm going to run this um, and I'm going to just spend five bucks a day, 20 bucks a day, whatever it is. You get to set it. You set the day that it starts. Now, the one thing, if you're doing this, you'll see this on the left, this end where it says optional and it says set an end date. If you do not set an end date, Facebook will continuously spend your $20 a day for the rest of forever until you catch it and tell it to stop, okay? So if that is, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If there's, if you're doing ongoing branding, that's just fine. And if it's built into your budget and this ad's going to be an ongoing ad that you want to keep pushing out there on a regular basis, then by all means, like let that go and, and just make sure it's, you know, set to where you need to and that it's spending the amount you want it to spend. Um, if you want it to end, then set the end date and that way you don't have to worry about it. Okay, does that make sense? Does anybody have questions there? Okay, under this show more options, if you drop this down, depending on what kind of ad you're running, you can do something that's called day parting. So what that means is that your ad only runs certain times of the day. Um, if you're doing something that tends to be 
maybe a high competition market. Um, like let's say I'm a car dealership and I'm marketing Toyotas and you know, it costs like the bids for Toyota is like ridiculous. I can actually set it to run only certain times of the day so that uh, I'm more controlling of my budget that way. The other thing that's good for that is if you're running only certain parts, you can actually set it so that you're only running ads while you're open. So that helps to eliminate if somebody sees your ad at two in the morning and decides to click and it calls you at two in the morning, right? So there's a couple of reasons you may wanna do that, um, but it's not necessarily, um, it's not mandatory or you know whatever, just to know that the option's there. And it doesn't work on all the ad types, it's just certain ones, okay. Now, ad placements. So let's talk a little bit about ad placements. The next thing as you scroll down, it's going to automatically have you selected in this recommended automatic placements. That means Facebook's gonna determine where your ad's going, how it's gonna allocate your budget and what platforms they're gonna put it on, okay? I always go with this. So one, you remember me talking earlier when we were in the Canvas section, about how ad sizing is different for Facebook and Instagram. They're supposed to be getting away from that and going to the same size. Uh, however, uh, they've been saying that for a while and it still hasn't happened yet. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I can actually come in here, if I select manual placements, you'll see on the left, it pulls up, I can select by devices. So I, um, I can do just iPhones, I can do just Macs, I could do PCs, like whatever it is, if you wanna be that specific. If you're like, I never wanna sell a house to an Android user, then you can eliminate them. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, so um, under platforms, what I do with my ads, and, I, and I'll, when we get into the analytics, this will probably make a little bit more sense but I actually separate out my Facebook and my Instagram ads. And there's a reason for that down, I'll show you as we get into the analytics. So I run separate ads for Facebook and separate ads for Instagram, okay? So I'll turn them off. Once you get past that, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different checkbox options of where your, uh, where your ads are going to be placed. So you can do them in stories, you can do them in the feed, you can do them in stream. There's so, so, so many options. Um, I, I, depending on what you're doing is where you'd wanna place them. So that's the thing is I can come in here and turn different things off or turn them on depending on my ad and creative and where I want it. Does that make sense? Does anyone have questions? Okay. Perfect. Let's get into creatives because now we already did our creatives, right? We've got our video ready or we've got our um, slideshow or our photos or whatever we're going to use. That's all set. We already took care of it. We built everything in Canva. We're ready to go. Once we get here, you'll see a section that says identity. For most of you, this is not gonna matter. For me, I run multiple business pages, so I have to actually select which page I'm running the ads for, right? So I wanna make sure it's on the right page and my accounts are already synced up, so it already knows it links to my correct Instagram page. That's good to go, okay? Then you're gonna come over here to your ad setup. What you're going to see is a couple of options. You can do a single image or video, you can do a carousel ad or you can do a collection. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen these in different forms when you've scrolled through ads. A lot of the um, like department stores or boutiques, things like that like to use the carousels and the collection because with carousel, you can just kind of scroll to the side and keep seeing image after image and just look through all the inventory they have in their store. Um, collection kind of sets it up a little bit differently where there's like one main image and then a few down below. Um, or you have the single image or video. If you're going to choose single image or video, you want to, I always recommend doing video over single image, anything that's more interactive. And the reason I don't like single image is it's the least eye-catching. You want something that moves or is interactive. So one or the other is going to perform better. Just a single photo does not do well. 
So at minimum, do the carousel um, or video collection, right? But single image, I don't recommend. Uh, then there's a couple of other things you can check down below. Um, if you add the instant experience, um, what that does is when they click on it, it pulls up almost like a separate little thing and fills their phone and it's a little bit more interactive, kind of a fun one. Um, and playing a playable source file is um, like where if it links to a different, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of, my brain's gone, we'll come back to that. <laughs> anyway, that, those are things you, um, the, I think the instant experience is one you'd use more anyway. So. I, I'm having a brain cramp there, so we'll just move on. <laughs> okay. All right. Once you have that, then you're going to come in and start adding your photos or your videos. Um, you want to get your ad copy set up. All of that is done here. So what you're going to look at is um, like adding your primary text, right? And then you're going to add a little short headline in your description. And this is all things to draw you in. Now here we're clicking website. You can also link to an event or you can have them call you, right? Because this is where we're directing people away from Facebook. Uh, we're gonna select website here and this is where you would add your website. Now um, you want to, again, like I said, make sure that you've got whatever landing page is set up correctly that it makes sense for your ad, okay? Once you have this done, you are ready to go and it's going to just have you publish the ad. It'll approve it or it'll flag it, whatever the process is. And then you'll dive into, um, uh, have it, anyway, they'll get it approved. There was one thing oh, I need to hang on. I gotta go back because there's one area. If I can, maybe I missed the slide part when I redid these last night, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I actually did completely somehow skip over this page. I'm like, there's information missing. Hold on. Um, under creating your audience. So let's backtrack a second. I apologize for this. I was like, I know I'm missing information. Okay, so your audience section here, um, this is one where you can come in and start cr creating some targeting and entering that target information. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. So under create new audience, that is you starting from scratch and you're gonna build that audience. Anytime you build an audience, especially if you think it's something you can use again, always, always save it um, so that you can come back to it and then it's already done for you and it saves you a ton of the work here. So um, always, always, always save your audience. So you can see here, there's a use save audience. You can use that drop down, and that's where you would pull out an audience that you've used in the past. So here, the search existing audiences, this is where you can start to look at different targets or demographics that might be um, already done, that someone's already done that you can use. Um, it's a great little tool. Now, on the right, you're gonna start to see, well, first is location. So, this one, obviously you don't wanna set it to just the United States. You're going to want to at least hone it into the county that you're working in. Um, but this is where you have to start really watching and making sure you're compliant with fair housing. Um, you're not, if you have a real estate um, ad, you are not allowed to target by zip code. So you've gotta be very careful about that and make sure that you, I think you can go to counties um, and I think you can do cities, but I don't think you can do zip codes. So play around with that and check. Um, you can also come in here and actually drop pins around like um, specific locations. So if I was maybe farming an area and I was trying to target, um, this is just an idea, but first time home buyers and I'm just pushing out you know, maybe that first time home buyer class or whatever, I can actually find addresses of apartment complexes and drop them in here and you can have as many as you want. So you could go through Salt Lake County and find um, whatever apartment complexes you want and individually put the locations in for each of those. And then it'll allow you to drop in uh, the radius around those apartment buildings. So you can squeeze it in. I think the lowest it lets you go, it seems like is, a, I can't remember if it's a mile or a kilometer, um, but you can hone it in pretty tight and that way you can really target different apartment areas and get your ads for first time home buyers in front of those people. Um, age is the other one to be careful of. Again, if you're marketing a listing, that is one that can get you into trouble for fair housing. So watch that. Um, 
and same with genders, okay? Now, once you come into the detailed targeting, you can actually turn this on and go in and start searching um, different options. This one is one that if, you, um, if you've checked those boxes, Facebook, the special ad box, Facebook's not gonna let you do anything that's not okay, right? So you can come in and just start typing some things in there and seeing what's pulling up. So you could, you know, I, there's a bunch of real estate stuff in there. So you can look at different real estate options and try to figure out what's gonna be something that your target market is interested in. If you're doing something that's not um, that special market, you can actually get very granular with this, right? So if I'm trying to target maybe a younger demographic, um, I could actually um, like put in things like that they might be interested in, like maybe gaming, right? Like Minecraft or I don't know, Fortnite or whatever it is they, they play or do these days. Um, if I'm trying to target somebody maybe a little bit more affluent or um, a little bit older, I could look at maybe, you know, people that are interested in like RVs or second homes or investment properties, you know, things like that are all different options that are in there. So you kind of want to think about how can I get into the head of the person I'm trying to reach and find whatever detailed targeting you can and put it, put it in there. Does that make sense? Okay. Does anyone have any questions there on that? Okay. Are we all doing okay? Does anybody need to take a little break? Are you feeling like you just got hosed down with the fire by the fire chief? Like, how are we doing? <laughs> yes, I see he's nodding. Um, if you guys need a little break, we can give you a second here. Get hop up, do some jumping jacks. Like what? Like somebody just let me know what you need. We're good. Okay. All right, let's push through then. All right, so let's get into analytics. So coming back to the dashboard, um, there's a lot of different things that you guys can look at through here. And I'm gonna show you a few slides and then I'll probably, um, I'm gonna switch my screen over. I wanna show you a live demo because there was so much stuff in here now that they've just updated um, that I could not get into all the slides. So we'll get into that for sure. Um, so when you're in your dashboard, you'll see all of your um, ads listed out, right? So you want to make sure that you are clicking and looking at the ones that you want to have information for, okay? So, and we'll get into some of these drop downs. This is what I want to show you guys live is like where you see columns where it has the drop down of performance, breakdown reports, like all of that um, is the stuff we'll, I'll show you live in a minute. One thing I do wanna point out is at the very top right-hand corner, you'll see that box that says lifetime. Um, that's a really important one. When you first open this up, it defaults to, I wanna say like the last week or something, it's not very much. And so if you pull it up and there's like no information there, don't panic. It's probably just cause your ads aren't currently running. So you can just need to switch it so that it works with the dates you need to get, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, once you select your ad, we're gonna go through in, and this will be like, if I hover over it, it'll say like view charts or there's different reports and there's a few different ways you can get in and a few different things you can look at. Again, once you pull this up, first thing you wanna look at, if you see no information, check this right hand side and make sure your dates are set correctly so that you can see. This chart here, that we're looking at is, is our performance chart. So this is gonna give me an overall snapshot of what happened with my ad over the course of whatever time frame I'm looking at, okay? So the first thing you're gonna see is this blue line that's kind of up and down along the week here. This is going to be, this is my results or my link clicks. So that's how many people clicked on my ad, okay? If I look over here on the left, I can see there was 4,540 people that saw my ad. So of those uh, 4,500 people, 65 people clicked on it. That's what gets me this 1.03 result rate, okay? So just to give you an idea, um, when you're running ads um, on Facebook, on any digital platform, what is considered a good result rate 
is actually 0 0.07 to 0 0.09. So you'll see I actually did really well with this one with the 1.03, even though you think 1% is so low, that's actually a really good result rate. So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at these, okay? Then it's gonna tell me in the middle how much it cost me for each of those clicks because I spent basically $60 at the point that I had pulled this. And so each of those clicks essentially cost me 92 cents, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is our demographics. So this is gonna tell me um, how many women and men pulled up the ad, what kind of what happened there. So you'll see this says all women right here, right? That's because the ad that I did, I own a fitness studio and we, I only spend ads to market to women because that's my target demographic. So when you run yours, you're going to see a split of men and women. Mine didn't have that obviously. Okay. So I know a hundred percent of my ads, the clicks and the reach were both women because that's what I set it at. But what I find interesting here is I'm looking at my different ad results. So the two biggest columns, well, the three biggest really are in this middle, but the one that actually performed the best is this 45 to 54 split. And what that shows me is that of the people that clicked it, you'll see I had a higher percentage of clicks versus um, reach on that ad, right? So this one, I had more reach than clicks, right? So this is what I'm looking at here. So it performed the best in this 45 to 54 age group. And then even here, even though I served a smaller percentage of these, this still performed really well in the 55 to 64. And that to me makes a lot of sense um, because for me, my I happen to know that my Facebook demographic skews older my Instagram demographic skews younger, okay? So when I do these things for Instagram, my, my better numbers are the 25 to 44 split, so it's different. So once I know my audience, this is all good, this is, makes sense, I'm getting the results that I planned on getting from Facebook. Does that make sense? Could I ask you a question, Chantel? Of course. So I'm curious, how could your clicks be higher than your reach? Did they- It's not share? number higher, it's percentage higher. So oh, gotcha. The percentage of people that clicked is higher. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All righty. So, any other questions in this one? Okay. Thanks, Anne, for clarifying that. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is where um, I wanted to show you guys because this is an ad where I did not split off my Instagram and my Facebook. Okay. So I ran them both together on the same ad um, So because I wanted to be able to show people um, why you, uh, another reason you wanna split them off. So you'll see here, this is talking about how much money I spent in general. So the first column is audience network. So that's places that like Facebook is affiliated with that they have permission to place ads um, and whatever, they kind of send them here and there, it's not a big deal. So I always leave that one turned on, but it's not a huge thing but Facebook wants your money to stay with Facebook. So they are going, even though they own Instagram, I know it's the weirdest thing when you place your ads, they keep your ads on Facebook. So if you have a certain dollar amount that you want to go towards Instagram or where I said that my demographics skew younger on Instagram when I'm trying to reach that specific demographic, that's another reason that I split them apart because if I keep them together, Facebook keeps the vast majority of my money on Facebook. So I split them up so that I can make sure that the money I want to allocate towards Instagram goes to Instagram. Does that make sense? Okay. Does anybody have questions about that? You can also view this. If you see on the right, you'll see this device type. Like you can break this down and see like how many Apple users viewed your ad, how many Android users, um, if it's mobile, desktop, I mean, it's crazy. There's so much information here. Okay. All righty. The next one I wanna show you here is another kind of overview. Um, this is one that I actually pulled from an ad I helped an agent run. Um, that was for an open house. Uh, they were doing a like a grand opening for 
Um, it was like luxury townhomes, if I remember correctly. And um, so they were doing a big grand opening thing and we're trying to push that, um, that event out. And so we went in and really set in some targets for her. Um, I, I will be honest, I haven't tried to do, this was probably, is the date on here? What is the, I'm trying to think how long ago this was. This might've been, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Anyway, um, at the time we could still do a lot of targeting with events, like really detailed targeting. So we got in here and really mapped out like who is buying, um, these townhomes. So we talked about it being because they were luxury townhomes, these tend to be people that are like newly divorced that uh, maybe had a really nice home that were just coming out of this home, but they still really like nice things, but didn't have the budget now for the full big house that they had before. Um, so we had really gotten in here and targeted some things like um, we did like Facebook status as far as like relationship status. So we targeted like it's complicated, um, divorced, um, separated. I can't remember what, there was like three or four options we were able to target. We targeted parents with older children. So we got in with parents, we think we did ages like eight and above and even adult children and targeted some of those. I mean, we got pretty granular with who we were trying to get in front of when we were pushing this event out. So this, I grabbed this snapshot on like day two of her campaign, just so you could see. Um, so we, in that day, were able to reach 600, 1,653 people. So that is um, what you're looking at here that I wanna point out is you'll see that reach number, the blue number of 1,653. Next to it, you'll see the number of 1.08. So frequency means that's how many times someone saw your ad like so what you're looking at the way they calculate that is you'll see that reach 1653 on the other side of amount spent you'll see that impressions number of 1788 so that's actually the number of times your ad loaded on someone's screen so what they do is they divide that into the 1653 goes into the 1788 so that's why you want to make sure your ads are, um, you, you want to check your budget, make sure you're spending enough money and that you don't have your ads too diluted. So obviously the longer we run an ad, the more those people are going to see that and the more your frequency number goes up. So you're looking for high frequency numbers. So if you're going to run an ad for say 30 days, your frequency is probably going to be somewhere around I don't know, six to 10. Um, if you extended that out to like three months or six months, you're likely gonna be at like 25. So the longer you run an ad, uh, the more times people see it and that's where you get that memory. So I get the reason I'm addressing this is I get that question a lot of how much should I spend on my ads? And the biggest thing is your frequency numbers. If you're doing something that's short term, like um, you know, sometimes we don't always have uh, the most um, notice to run an open house, right? Like sometimes we're like, oh, we're running an open house in a week or three days or whatever. If that's the case, you're going to want to spend a higher dollar amount for a shorter amount of time so that you can get the frequency up. If it's something that's more like branding or awareness that you're going to run ongoing, um, you know, maybe you're looking to try to recruit for listings or whatever that is, and it's going to be something you're constantly running you can spend less money and keep it going over the course of the time and gradually that frequency is going to build. Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions about that? I know that's kind of a confusing little thing. Okay. All right, so um, down at the bottom, what you're gonna see is the objective here was engagements because it was an event. So we're looking for people to like, you know, say they're going or click interested or whatever that may be. Um, so we got on this one in this the couple of days, we got 242 post engagements, which is great. So it cost us four cents per person. Um, and so that's how we kind of gauge anytime anybody interacted with us. Um, and to this point, we had spent $8.74. I think the total ad spend we did on this one was like, 
I want to say it was like a hundred dollars maybe. And we ran it for four days, um, something to that nature, or maybe it was $50 and we ran it for four days. I can't remember. Anyway, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and does anybody have any questions on that or budget or why, or if that, does that all make sense? Okay. Everyone's super quiet today. <laughs> all right. Now I'm gonna show you this one on the age gender split because obviously mine you saw was all women. Hers still trended 89% um, women um, versus 10% men. A lot of that's going to do with the targets that were set up and um, images that were used and things like that. So different images are gonna to appeal to your male population versus your female population. That's something to keep in mind but you can still see how it performed. Um, and oddly enough with age, we were she was skewing a lot younger than she had anticipated, um, which is fine, right? It's not a big deal, but just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, now over here on the right, what you're gonna see is the times of day that our ads performed well. So if you're looking at something and trying to figure out like maybe you're day parting or maybe you wanna be more conscious of your budget, you could come in here and say, okay, I had a ton of engagement here right in this lunchtime hour, which may be meaning that you're targeting professionals, right? And people with jobs. So maybe at lunch and after work are the times that they're on their computer. So let's say your budget is a hundred dollars and you really want to maximize it. Once you know this data, you could come in and run the ad again and set it up to run only from like 11 to one, and again, from like six to nine or whatever that is. And you would actually be able to be a little bit more impactful about the money that you're spending, okay? Which is kind of a cool little thing. Okay, the next one I wanna show you is location. So that's gonna pull it out for you. There's three different options for you to look at here. You'll see country. Obviously this is gonna highlight all of um, America for you. You can break it down to region, which is gonna drop it in a little closer. And then the most information you can get or the tightest that it'll show you is DMA region. And that's the one you're gonna wanna look at because most of you as agents are not gonna be marketing out of state or whatever. So that's the one you wanna drop it down to and look at where your ads were served, okay? Does anybody have questions there? Cool. All right. You guys are gonna get done real early because nobody's asking questions. Uh, but what I wanted to do is kick out of, let me come into this. Oh, shoot. Keyword number three. I can't believe I forgot these. Analytics. <laughs> You're getting two keywords back to back really fast. So analytics. Keyword number four is ITS title. Okay, so if we go back, one was ads manager. Two was targeted demographics. Three was analytics. Four, ITS title. Okay, you got all four. All right, let me, um, I'm gonna stop share here for a second because I wanted to get in and show you guys this live uh, platform here, options. Okay, so switching here, I'm gonna share my screen here again. Okay, so this is my ad manager, okay? So over here, you'll see this, if you have multiple accounts, over here is gonna be like, um, you'll see if I, like I have eight accounts, but if I put it on my personal thing, um, there's nothing. So you wanna make sure that that is set um, to the correct business account. So I'm gonna pull back up um, my business page here that I can show you. Okay, so once you're here, there's some information that this is going to show you just right on the screen, right? So this is going to tell you, like you'll see these ones here, completed, completed, um, like I don't have anything currently running. Um, it's going to tell you your bid strategy, your budget, and then um, what it's going, you know, how it's sending your ads. Then it's going to tell you results, right? What were you tracking? Were, these ones happen to be link clicks. You'll see this one here was a reach. Um, so it's going to be showing you like this is landing page views that I was working for. This is going to tell you like what your objective was. Then you're going to see it's going to show reach. 
well, because it's defaulting to this month and I don't have anything currently on, this has nothing. So this is where you want to come in and drop it down. You can go lifetime today, yesterday, seven days, 30 days, this week, last week, last month, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to open it to lifetime. So this is going to tell me an overall view of the link clicks I got, how many people I reached, how many impressions I had, my cost, and how much I spent on those ads, right? And you'll see when they end and some of them are ongoing and whatnot. So just so you know. Okay, now these are where you've got some different information here. So this columns, I can come in and check. There's so many different, so it's going to de default to performance but I can actually set it up and look at different um, analytics based on um, different categories. So if I wanna come in and see my engagement, so I can click that and it's gonna show me how many interactions I got on my posts. It'll show me comments, saves, shares, clicks, all of that, okay? So that's a great way to come in. You can look at um, like performance and clicks. You can look at cross device, messaging engagement. So this one is going to show up if you had anything that was set up to messages. And um, there's so many different things here you can come in and look at. This one here is going to pull you like you can look by time by delivery. Um, so you can pull up some of like your age and gender region DMA, you can look at device, there's so many different things. And you can look at by action. So you can look at reaction types, you can look at video type. I mean, there's so many different things here. Um, then under reports, you can actually export the data based on what you're looking at. And you can look at your standard reports, you can, you can export reports on age and gender. Um, and then if you open up this all 25, there's actually like tons of different information here that you can pull reports on and export your reports which is super cool. Um, so I just wanted to show you that live because that's really hard to like get in and screenshot um, and to kind of mess around with. So anyway, that if you have any A-B testing, you can turn that on here. It's not set up right now to do that. So, because I don't have an A-B test running. Um, so in a nutshell, that is your analytics platform, okay? Um, perfect. So let's talk now questions. What questions do you guys have? Gosh, you guys are so quiet today. So Chantel, yeah. out of your experience, is Facebook the place to market ourselves for the least amount of money? Um, as of right now, I would say yes, but I also, with that caveat, it really depends on who you're trying to get in front of. So like you noticed with mine, Facebook is really still very, very effective um, in that like 45 to 65 age bracket. If you're skewing younger and you're trying to get in front of like 25 to 40 year olds, Instagram's going to be a better bet. Um, Google is always awesome. I love Google. And the one thing about Google that you have to realize is, um, is with your keywords being specific about um, what target keywords you, so the way Google works is again with that bidding process, but you're bidding on phrases that people are typing into Google. So if you were to do something like real estate, you're gonna pull up with pretty much everyone, but the more specific you can get, the cheaper those words become because like everyone's bidding on real estate, right? And it's going to the highest bidder. So like, for example, um, Toyota is another good example. If I wanted to bid on the word Toyota, the last I heard it was approximately $150 per click. So if somebody put Toyota in the search engine and I go and click on an ad there, that company pays $150 for me to click on that ad. So uh, the more people that bid on those words, um, the more expensive they become because it drives the price up. So if you're bidding on something very general, it's likely going to cost you more. So if I was going to bid on, say, the word real estate, um, I'm probably going to pay more than if I bid on real estate Utah or even like real estate South Jordan, right? So you can get some really inexpensive things on Google and do very, very well 
if you're strategic about your keywords and really honing in on certain areas. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So I would say of those, that's, those are the platforms I would recommend spending money on. Okay. Because okay. I think I'm speaking for a lot of people um, in, in, in any kind of business where they're trying to sell something, whether it's themselves as a realtor or a product that we regularly get calls from people wanting us to use their services and and we've all spent money and we've all lost money doing it yes <laughs> yeah. um and so you've obviously been successful in advertising on facebook and instagram so the thing that i will say that causes most people to lose money when they're marketing um, in general is not being specific about what they expect from the outcome and how to measure it. So when we're advertising and we and a company calls us and says, hey, I'm gonna do all your Facebook marketing and we don't have any kind of background knowledge of what we're expecting, it's really, it, not only is it a disservice to us and it wastes our money, but it's also a disservice to your advertiser. And if they're not asking the right questions and making sure that they're putting you in the right places, that's a red flag, right? We need to, we need to be asking those questions is, what are you expecting to have happen from this ad? Are you expecting 15 people to call you? Then that's a different conversation than, am I looking at the, the traffic on my website? And you know anybody can say, look, we drove, 65 clicks to your website. Well, great. Did they call you? Right. So it's all depends on how you're measuring things and being very, very specific in your conversations with the people that are helping you advertise so that they're clear about what you're expecting and how you're expecting to track this. And you're clear about whether or not it's working for you. Right. So most of the times when we do that, we, we just, it's, really it, what it comes down to, I would say 70% of the time is a disconnect between what we're expecting to happen and what happened. And so it's really making sure that's clear in the beginning and figuring out, okay, is this just branding? When it's something that's a branding campaign, a lot of times that takes a long time to see results. And so they, that's gonna be measured by things like website traffic and it takes time. And so you've just got to be patient with it, but also making sure that if they're not asking you those questions ahead of time, that's a red flag for you that they're not a company that's going to perform for you. Does that make sense? Yes. So basically ask a lot of questions. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And have your expectations laid out a hundred percent. I want my phone calls to be increasing by, you know, or asking those questions. How many phone calls do you think I can expect from this campaign, right? Or how, like, how are we measuring this or whatever it is so that you're clear and they're clear. And then you'll know right off the bat what's going to happen. Also, any company that wants you to do like contracts or things like that, where it's a, something long term or whatever, if you don't have the option to back out, that's also a red flag. If they're not performing for you, you should have the option to call it. Right. Um, and a lot of places they'll have like a three month minimum, which is um, anything above that, like you should be able to run for three months and then cancel. And I understand the three month um, because it takes, like we said, it takes time to sometimes build that up. And if we don't allow it that three months, a lot of times people, um, they start spending money and after the first month, they're not seeing the results. And so they'll cancel it. So I understand that as well. Right. So three months is reasonable. Um, anything above that, like if people don't want you to sign a year contract or whatever. Um, and if you're spending a high dollar amount, you should absolutely be yielding some massive results. And if you're not, that's a problem. Right. Yes, I've actually said to them when they've called me, I'm the one taking the risk here. What can I, I you know, are you willing to give me my money back in X amount of time if I don't get the results? that you're saying and um and most often they'll say no i'm sorry and they'll try and you know wangle down on the price but yeah i i think there are a lot of companies out there who don't know what they're doing but hope that you don't ask enough questions yes. to that out 100 percent. and they especially pray unfortunately they really prey on realtors because 
They know that realtors are solopreneurs that don't know marketing background and they're, they really know that you're hoping, what they're hoping is that you're just going to come in and not ask questions. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, just yeah. out loud to all, all of you on the class, have any of you had experiences um, using and paying for um, advertising like um, on Facebook or Instagram? And if you have, what was your experience? Nope. No. <laughs> no. I had a lot of experience with losing money that way. Well, and I think if you <laughs> were you doing it yourself? No, I, I've hired several different people. Okay. To do okay. it from small solo operators to large businesses. Yeah. It's kind of it's a it's a hard thing. And I think Honestly, I, the thing that I think causes people to lose money the most when they're advertising <clears throat> um, is that they're not putting in the right targets. It's like we talked about, if you're diluting your money too much, you're never going to see results. If you're trying to get reach too many people, like, like we always say, right, the riches are in the niches. That is never more true than in advertising. The more you can hone in and target the people you need to target, the better off you're going to be. And so that's really what you want to, what you want to look at and whether that's limiting it based on how far location that you're spreading your dollars or if it's who it is. And um, there's ways you can really shrink it down. Most people, when they're advertising, they'll just go in and click boost post. I'm going to pay 50 bucks. Great. Here we go. Oh, look, we 400 people saw it, but BFD, it doesn't help you. So the more you can really target and hone in, the more productive you're going to be with your ad money. Um, and then having very specific ways to measure. So when I'm doing campaigns, um, be, so it's a little bit different for me, but you'll kind of get the idea. Um, when I run something, I'll run something that is only available for when somebody's clicked the ad. So like maybe it's like a $5 first class for a new client. So when I'm running that campaign, I turn that $5 off from everywhere else so that I know that if somebody's buying that $5 pass on my account, that that is something that specifically came from my ad. Does that make sense? So it could be an offer, um, something that they have to claim, but something that's very unique so that you know that that's a very easy way for you to track it. Another thing you can do is having um, like a specific phone number on there that's maybe like a like a call tracking number or Google number so that you know anything that called that phone number came from that specific ad because it's only on that ad. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, just, you know, little things like that that you can do that help track. But branding ads or things like that are long term and a lot of time it takes a long time for you to see return on that investment. And it's one of those things that you just got to buckle down and just like just understand you're, get, you're getting your name out there. Okay. I have a question. This is yeah. Cindy. Um, on hiring someone to help with the ads, what are some things that we need to look for? What kind of costs or fees are involved? Um, I, I'm sure it's all over the board, but what are some yeah. parameters that maybe you could advise us with on that? Um, so most, uh, most companies, it's going to depend on what kind of advertising you're doing. On like social media, typically what they do, um, what I see a lot is like a 50-50 split. So let's say you're spending $500 a month with them. Um, they'll allocate $500 or 250 of that to manage everything. And then 250 of that goes into ad spend. And so that's pretty common. Um, Google, because there's so much competition out there in Google, you can find people to do Google ads for you. Um, typically like I would say between 15% and 25% for your management fee. Um, it's a little bit lower and it's more one of those things that it's more like set and ongoing. It's not as involved as Facebook um, after it's set up. Um, so those kind of things to look at. And then again, just asking questions, I would check and say like, have you ever worked with any other realtors? What were the results that they got? Can I talk to them? Um, seeing analytics from ads they've run, um, looking at their, like another one is looking at their own stuff. Like uh, I get companies all the time that market for like SEO for websites. 
and I'm like, I'll Google their name and they don't even pull up themselves in the search engines. I'm like, so why would I trust you to market if you can't even get yourself to pull up? So just it's asking tons and tons and tons of questions and informing yourself. And if you ever just want to bounce something off of me or just say, hey, I'm looking at advertising here. What are your thoughts? And, you know, let me do a little digging. I'm happy to help out there, too. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think a key when someone is trying to sell you something is if they're desperate to close the sale and they answer your question and then straight away say, so can, can, can we get this done then? Are you ready to give me payment? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> um, I think that if they are genuine, they're not going to try and close you that day. They'll be happy to send you an email and they're, and they're willing to spend some time answering your questions. And as soon as they put pressure on you, well, we've only got so many spots or this is just an offer for today, then I'm like, no, thank you. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Cool. And do you offer services, Chantel? Um, I don't. So running Facebook ads takes so much time that I, I don't, but I'm happy to refer you guys out to people that um, that I know or that, um, that take care of that. So if you want someone to run it for you, just let me know and I can give you a couple of referrals. But again, just do some digging. And a lot of it too, especially with social media, um, you've got to find someone that is good at um, like sounding like you. Right. So a lot of the times that's going to be finding somebody that even personality wise meshes with you um, because you want to sound as authentic as possible. And I think that's another problem we run into is we start paying somebody to to do things for us and they and they sound like them. And our our audience knows it's not us. Right. They can tell. So um, that can be a lot of a lot of it, too. Finding somebody that you jive with the stuff they put out um, and see if it flows with you and your brand. Um, so I'm happy to give you some recommendations, but always just kind of interview, get to know them and see, see what they offer. Great. That's excellent advice. Cool. Um, what I'm going to do really fast is I'm going to throw the link up again in the chat for the, um, I want to make sure everybody's got the roster. Um, so I'm going to put that in one more time. And then if you want additional help, I'm gonna add a second link. This is my calendar link that you can actually book a 30 minute session with me. I can help you with the branding. I can start walking like, so I know um, Cindy, you were interested in the branding class, but we can actually just start walking through that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I'm happy to do that too. So anything I can do to help, you guys are awesome. I love Presidio. I love helping Presidio. I love working with their agents. So anything I can do for you guys, I'm here for you. So cool. I was wondering if I missed a keyword because I have a Sorry, little... what was that, Laura? I was wondering if I had missed uh, any oh, keywords. I got the I got the first two. Yeah, so I gave um, a couple of them out really close together because I had forgotten one. So the four <laughs> keywords are first one is ads manager, second is targeted demographics. Third was analytics and fourth was ITS title. So the last two, I realized I had forgotten analytics. So I threw them in like basically at the same time. So that was on me. Thank you. My, my daughter was uh, being very distracting. So I didn't hear. <laughs> That's, okay. That's okay. You guys have been awesome. Um, again, if you need anything, please, please, please let me know. I'm happy to help you guys any way I can. ITS is happy to help you however we can. Um, and yeah, we're just here to help you guys grow. That's our that's our goal is to help you guys grow your businesses. So. Thank you. This has been a great class. It feels a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of information, but it's it's just great um, to get a baseline understanding of what's going on behind the scenes with all these Facebook ads. Yeah, you bet. This is awesome. You bet. Thanks. And if you want to try an ad and you are and you want me to help walk you through it, the first one or whatever, please reach out to me. I'm happy to do that also. And just know that the office in Pleasant Grove, they do record all of these and they do go on YouTube. So if you, like me, have thought, oh, I think I understood that, but I'd like to hear it again, you can watch this. So Yes, and the other thing I was going to say is when you fill out the forms and I get everyone's email, um, I can send out the slides to everybody that's, um, that fills out the roster for me. So okay, that'll wonderful. help you also to have the slides and be able to touch base with those again.
Wonderful. Thanks so much, Chantella. Yeah. Is everyone okay? You're all good. Okay, wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys. Have a great Have day, a everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.